Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Before I pack up this turntable to ship it back to the importer, let's talk about the Pair Audio Blue Robin Hood turntable and Cornet 2 tone arm. Okay? So, uh, this, tone arm, this turntable will look familiar to some of you who are familiar with Tom Fletcher's designs for Nottingham, Nottingham Audio. Uh, you'll recognize this belt, which is a rather large, springy affair. That's the style. And you'll recognize this large pulley that's the motor, connected to the motor. And on this version of this turntable, the motor is separated from the plinth, so it's, it's better isolated. And it's on its own little platform there. And as with all of these turntables, by the way, uh, Pear Audio Blue has this design from Mr. Fletcher, who was a friend of uh, Peter Merrick, who's manufactures these turntables. So these are authorized versions of the Nottingham design. It's a complicated story we're not going to get into here. So it's a split plinth design. You see there are, there are two plinths here connected together. They don't come apart when you pack it. And it's sitting on adjustable feet and you can either use the feet that it comes with or it also comes with pointed feet depending upon what your preference is. I mean, as far as feet goes, I'm not talking about any other kinds of preferences, okay? All right, let me pull this platter off here. It's a nice, heavy metal platter. Also, as with uh, all Nottingham designs, there is a damping ring that goes around the outside of the, of the platter. And it's, there's a, as you can see, there's a groove in there to take the damping rubber ring. So I'm going to show you this is a nice heavy platter. Nice heavy metal platter. And it's filled with oil. The oil has now come out. I will have to clean it off, which is no problem. But this is a nice piece of machining for a moderately priced turntable. And it's fairly hefty. I don't know the exact weight. Off the top of my head, because uh, I don't know the, top, the weight off the top of my head right now. All right, there's not. Of course, there's a mat that comes with it. Now, also, you can see this is a very, very nice bearing. I didn't, I didn't measure it, so I can't tell you how precisely it's machined, but based upon everything that I heard, it's precisely machined. And this, th here's an interesting thing about this design. You see this little thing here? This is a piece of rubber that comes up from down below, and it, it's designed to just touch the bottom of the platter. It, it, it kind of damps. Uh, it, there are some people that believe a platter should be free to move as freely as possible, and there are other people that believe it shouldn't be free to move as freely as possible, that there should be some braking mechanism of some kind just to kind of even it out. Uh, and, and keep it from getting out of control. And, and that's uh, this design and this designer are in the latter camp. So this little piece of rubber touches the bottom surface of the platter and assures that the platter doesn't spin sort of freely and out of control as it spins. Okay, so that's that. I mean, it's a very basic, it's a beautiful design also. It's a very basic, beautifully made table, not that expensive, we'll have the price. Uh, will be in the text. And this is the Cornet 2 arm. All of the arms that are made by this company and also that were made by uh, Nottingham, by Tom Fletcher, have a, a similar kind of design. The anti-skating is adjusted this way. There's this lever. It sits against this rod here. And then you adjust this weight here. The further out you put it, the more pressure, anti-skating pressure is applied. So I hope you can see all of that in the video. And you can. And this arm is adjustable. This is the counterweight. You loosen a grub screw and you slide it in and out to adjust that. The vertical tracking angle, stylus rake angle, is adjustable by loosening a set screw right here on the base of this arm. And then you can lift it up or lower it and gently tighten the set screw, which is also nylon. 
to, to uh, set the height. And you can also adjust the azimuth by gently rotating. You can see the bearing. It's, it's kind of a captured unipivot type of bearing. But to set the azimuth, you actually rotate you can actually rotate the head shell, which is press fit into this rod. And uh, there'll be more information about all the materials used on this turn turntable and arm in the review. This is a video, uh, kind of just an overview. And that's how it works. And that, right now we have, a, we have an Ortofon Quintet black with a sapphire cantilever attached to it. And that's what I used for most of the review. And it's it's quite a nice cartridge in the it's the top of the quintet line and it's quite good. So that's what I used. It's probably uh, overkill for this turntable in terms of what it costs relative to the cost of this turntable. The arm is hardwired, and they give you uh, they they give these nice uh, bullet plugs. So all in all, a compact, nicely designed, attractive turntable, and as with all of these Nottinghams, you leave it hooked up to the AC all the time. The motor kind of v vibrates a little bit. It doesn't wear anything out. It's meant to do that. And then when you want to start it, you just give it a quick turn and it gets going and gets up to speed relatively quickly. And you play a record and when you're done, you stop it. It'll stop by itself almost because uh, the theory behind this turntable is low torque and just, just enough to get it going and then you let it do its thing. And that's one of the reasons why it also has this, this brake on here because since it is such a loose fitting belt, uh, the idea is to get it going and then have it braked by this piece of rubber. That's it, the Pear Audio Blue Robin Hood. It does not steal from the rich and give to the poor, but it certainly will give you uh, a very rich sound for not that much money. And the cornet too. Arm.